But right about now, we need to talk about uh, uh, intellectual property, what the law says about it. And uh, with me in studio is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya who is going to tell us uh, more about himself. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, James. Um, so my name is Liz Lenjo. I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. And I specialize in intellectual property, entertainment, media, and fashion law. So we are, I'm a lawyer of the creative industry. Uh, so I, I run my own uh, boutique legal services firm, a consulting firm by name IIP Legal Studio. And when I'm not at my IP Legal Studio, I'm the chairperson of the Copyright Tribunal, which is a specialized um, court to listen to copyright disputes. Yeah, so that's me in a nutshell. Ilikwaje Lisa, I can end up being a lawyer. Then I can... And what you know, I'm going for uh, intellectual property law. Uh, so Liz loved, loves the creative arts. Liz wanted to be an artist and an actress. Like I wanted to be a Beyonce. <laughs> um, but, you know, African parents at the time were like, really, the arts, music, film, you know, you'll die broke. Um, so through my love for, for the creative industries when I was in uni, I tried a stint, modeling, singing, and then I realized there was a big gap in terms of lawyers in that space. So that is how I got into the industry. So how does the law protect ideas? Um, so in uh, we have intellectual property law. That is the, uh, the area that specializes in protection of expression of ideas. So intellectual property, like I said, you had, a, I said, expression, yeah? We certainly in the Shule, we did math, English, history. See, we're exposed to like every, the similar stuff, right? That's raw knowledge. With raw knowledge, you just get an idea. Oh, I think I want to create a water filter, right? So no one will, will protect that idea of thinking to create the filter. But when you create the filter, that is what that can be protected, right? So that's IP. Um, and in intellectual property, we have industrial property and we have copyright. So industrial property is where we have the patents, the most commonly misused phrase, because uh, everyone who walks into a lawyer's office wants to say, I want to patent an idea, right? So we have patents. I'll explain that what is right shortly. Then we have um, what we call utility models, which are also known as petty patents, like Americans call them petty patents. Um, then we have trademarks and we have industrial designs. Those are, those are the majors, all right? And then copyright. So patents uh, are the highest form of protection in intellectual property. Um, because you get exclusivity almost in the whole wide world. It means that this has not been done before, never been seen before. It's the first time humans are interacting with this idea, with this invention. Yeah. So you can imagine the threshold of getting a patent is much, much higher. Um, and the funny the, the thing I always tell people and they laugh is that when you're an inventor, the minute you put your invention like on social media or somewhere where someone can have access to it, you automatically destroy your novelty. So a patent has to be novel, new and industrially applicable. So it has never been seen before. So I myself, as an inventor, I can destroy my novelty by quickly putting it on social media. And the reason I always tell, you know, inventors that and, and you know, Kenyans and people in general is because we always get excited about our ideas. We never think about the protection. We're always quick to to run and tell the whole world, oh, by the way, I created, I invented, Cindy. Um, so I always tell people, the minute you do that, you create what is called prior art. And when an IP office is trying to, when you when now you go to register, when the IP office is uh, you know, reviewing whether there's prior art, if they are pointed back to what you posted, you already exposed yourself sort of thing. Um, so if you have a, something that's patent worthy, register Kwanzaa before anything. You get exclusive rights for 20 years. That means everyone must come to you uh, for a license if they want to even advance what it is, if they want to use it, it's you they come to. Yeah. You have a follow-up question before yeah. I continue? What, what do you mean by industrially applicable? So industrially applicable means it's um, applied in um, industry, manufacturing, science, like that kind of space, technology, uh, advancements and whatnot. That's what it generally means. Um, and, you know, we have, an, we have a different approach to patenting than the U.S. For U.S., they only look at usefulness. So they have 
given patents to the most weirdest inventions. Like someone invented a nose pick. Like at you buy something that will pick your nose, now you a handkerchief. So, <laughs> yeah, like they even had a patent for the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mkate, peanut butter. That was a patent. <laughs> yeah, so that's what it means. Um, then we have what we call now utility models, also known as petty patents. Those are now improvements on an existing patent. Um, and, you know, when a patent, see, a patent, I said you have exclusive rights for 20 years, right? So after the 20 years, what happens is it goes into what we call the public domain, which means now you and I can access that technology or information and create something else. And we, do, we won't owe the original creator anything because it now rights expired after the 20 years, and now we can use it. Which goes back to also just the rationale of intellectual property law in general. It incentivizes a creator. Like, you know, for that, there's a period you will have those exclusive rights to exploit and whatnot. And then at some point, you know, it will now go into the public domain so that now also everyone else can benefit, reverse engineer without any issues and do whatever, improve. That's the rationale of IP law. Um, so then with party patents or utility models, it's the improvement. Then you'll get 10 years of exclusive rights over that improvement. So like, let's say when these headphones were first created, right? See, they were a patent. Yeah. And then um, maybe I decided to add another element. Um, I don't know that will make the sound more amplified. Yeah. So I'll get that ele the element of that amplification of the sound. Or if I'm able to change uh, tones and I can hear your voice in a soprano or whatever, like that element is what I will get a, a, um, a utility model too, yeah? But I can't exploit it as long as you're to, you're, uh, this is within the 20 years. So if I want to go to the um, to business to commercialize, then I have to come back to you and say, James, uh, now, please give me a license so that I can now market this new tech that advances you. And then you're able to say, okay, I need you to pay me royalties or license it X amount of money and da, da, da. If I commercialize without you, you will come and sue me for patent infringement. Then we have industrial designs that will now protect the aesthetics, how this thing be it looks beautiful. See, like now how when the, in when the headphones were, the first, were first created, they, were, they came in very different shapes and sizes. So everyone who had a different shape would, you know, create the, would protect that uh, element, the shape, uh, the um, design around it. Uh, as an industrial design so if like the way this this uh, earpiece can roll and whatnot so you protect all those sides to show that uh, design element so industrial designs will also protect the colors the textures that you achieve um, the patterns uh, around that um, yeah the shapes and whatnot you know a chair when the chair was first created you know when people make different two things like shiviari chairs you see that's initially had an industrial design, all that stuff. So the, the aesthetic elements, um, we get protection up to 15 years and then um, it gets into the public domain, which means someone else can use it. However, if your industrial design is your star innovation, like it's that thing that will define your brand forever, it can graduate now into what we call a trademark because also it identifies your, your brand. So a trademark is the brand, is a logo, the brand name, the designs, the shapes, the names, uh, combination of names and words and numbers, all these things that identify your business. So like for you guys, Haki. Yeah, Haki is your trademark. The way you've done the mic, it kind of looks like a comb or whatever. You know, the way I'm looking at it, that logo, that's your trademark. So even an industrial design can graduate into a trademark. And uh, in some jurisdictions, they have what we call 3D trademarks as well. Um, so again, with trademarks, you identify the area of business in which you're in, and that's how you uh, protect your trademark. So now like Haki FM is in radio services, that's likely to be under, we have what is called the next classification that divides goods and services. So it's... Um, I think there are 46 classes, so kuna goods and services. So you're like, oh, if I sell shoes, I'm at a, a, in a certain class. I'm in entertainment. That is what class 41. And then you you declare, I mean, the radio services, broadcasting, something, something. And then you get that exclusive use of a hacky for that class. So if I started shoes called hacky shoes, I will get that trademark because we are not uh, competing and the likelihood of confusion is is slim. So unless you decide to start your own shoe line called Hacky Shoes or something like that. So that's always something that people need to understand. And especially with very common words uh, in a language or whatever, you find that in, in that regard. Yeah. So now where is the place of a copyright? So now copyright is now the other side of IP, which now protects the expression of ideas. 
um, and it cuts across literary works, artistic works, um, architecture. I know architects are always surprised, like, oh my gosh, I can register <laughs> copyright. And we're trying to get them to realize that they can. Um, we have um, sculptures, musical works, um, sound recordings are protected by copyright. This recording broadcast is also recorded, is protected by um, copyright um, software is protected by copyright. In some jurisdictions, they patent software. In Kenya, we protect it by copyright. Um, and then, of course, the films, um, audiovisual works in general, music videos, all those are now protected um, by copyright. So I'll give an example. We love to watch soap operas, right? Uh, we, we, as we grew up, my time, we grew up with the Mexican soaps, you know. So you would find that they would have this similar themes. Like I'll, I'll give you two, like I remember at the back of my head, we used to watch Cuando Says Mia and Esmeralda. And <laughs> it was always about a girl meets boy, uh, they are damned, nini, nini. like the themes were always same, but it's that expression. Right. There was always an evil stepmother somewhere, CG, who is angry. <laughs> so it's that expression that's now what is protected by copyright. Another example, if I drew a giraffe and you drew a giraffe, see our expressions will be different. They will be protected by copyright. Me, I may decide to draw it with sticks and then you will do your madoidos and do whatever. We both would get um, copyright protection from that. Yeah. Why would you watch uh, Storm of a Paradise? Oh, I did. I, but I, I don't know if it was one of those ones or in like in my favorite, favorite books. The ones I mentioned are the ones who are like in my favorite books. <laughs> That's Liz Ledger for you. Yeah. You're listening to me, Mabe, alongside the advocate of the High Court of Kenya, Liz Lenjo, who at some point wanted to be Ayonse or Kenya. <laughs> A specialist of video and service law, and she is right here on Law and Justice to discuss intellectual property. There is something called a trade secret. Mm -hmm. You're gonna follow up, and what is it? So, trade secret ni, is that protection um, of you know it, um, an expression that doesn't fall like an improvement or an quote unquote an advanced idea that doesn't fall within the IP rights I mentioned, right? So it, it has some proprietary rights. It has an it will change or revolutionize the business, but it doesn't fall somewhere in between. But also you will find that sometimes even with patents, people may decide not to register a patent and protect it by a trade secret. Protection by a trade secret means um, that you just have a, a very solid contract that uh, ensures. High, the highest form of confidentiality. Um, then it will also ensure the highest form of like non-compete. And non-compete simply means that you can't work for a competing brand because by virtue of be working for me, so you've been exposed to my trade secrets, my know-how, those two little, little things that I do to make my service or product different. I'll give you an example, Coca-Cola. Nobody knows what goes into the Coca-Cola formula. Everyone has tried to reverse engineer by using their taste buds. You taste, you're like, mm, I think there was a cola fruit, there's some fees, but nobody has replicated that taste. Sindio, Coca-Cola's strategy was trade, uh, trade secret. This, is, this company is like in the 1900s. To date, we don't know. But the kind of advancements they have in terms of contracts, the strategies that they have uh, to ensure that confidentiality, they'll never have colleagues in the same department in a public space together. So you'll start talking about work or something. So those things, they have thought about it. So they're very proactive. So a trade secret is now protected using a contract and there will be clauses which are custom-made depending on the business that you're in. Because literally now this is a game of confidentiality more than anything. Yeah. Now I want to feature your formula for a long time. Eh, no, I want to cook your cook. No joke. Once they they uh, tell you or they make you understand mm -hmm. that this is the reason why we come here to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you will keep the secret. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. you will find out what you Definitely. <laughs> A collective management organization. Mm -hmm. When we talk about um, intellectual property, uh, what is this? So, collective management organizations are organizations that are registered by members on behalf of members to what we call collectively administer copyrights. Um, so just going back to the conversation around copyright, yeah, 
I told you it, it um, protects this expression of ideas in music, in film, and whatnot. Now, especially music and publishing, book publishing, um, those are the areas that generally have now in the collective management organizations where now they ensure artists are paid for use of their works um, in, in spaces or usages they can't go themselves. I'll give an example, a radio station or a broadcaster. Uh, we just played uh, really Pose and Size 8. So imagine this song, image as well, like how many stations, then Pose and Size 8 wanna come. Ati hodi haki FM, mepcheza ngo mayangu, pay me 5,000 bob today. Then Kesho wakuja sewe, eh, leo jana mlicheza, leo mlicheza nimbo yangu 10 times, give me 20,000, you see. So the CMO basically now licenses users and says uh, they negotiate, there's a negotiation that happens, then you're given an agreement, and then you pay royalties based on the agreement. You might be paying quarterly or semi-annually or whatever for the use of the music and then you give them the um, your playlist and say this is how we have been playing the songs then based on what you've been paying they'll figure out how to distribute to the artists the same thing with now like restaurants pubs discos and whatnot see they're users of music as well you played my song ni pay you that's what the cmos normally do and then now they administer that right on their behalf and then they get paid so that's what cmos do now for a cmo to be effective it means the copyright holders or the rights holders pia they've registered themselves and they've figured a way to also register their works now copyright is automatic uh, when it moves from an idea to an expression it's it now it gets protected so it has to move from idea to uh, an expression so come i had an idea of drawing a giraffe i have to draw it then that drawing will be uh, uh, protected. I have an idea of a song. The minute I either write the lyrics or I find a way to harm it, write it as sheet music, then now it's protected. It has. It's now it's an, in a tangible format. Um, now we have further now uh, as different countries come together and said, you know what? I think we should start looking at registration. These other IP um, form, um, protections I mentioned, they must be registered. Copyright is the only one that it doesn't have to be registered. But we are seeing that. We have to start registering it. So I'm the chair of mm -hmm. the copyright tribunal. At the moment? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. We make sure we choose the vizuri. Eh, tunakikisha the artists, wasani, rights holders, mm -hmm. um, know how to deal with dispute resolution. So, which leads now to this conversation around uh, what happens kukiwana kesi, especially in copyright issues, right? We've talked about music, we've talked about film, and like we could talk about copyright for like hours on end, right? But especially where there are people, the, the likelihood of there being a misunderstanding or a disagreement is always high. Sindio, whether we an agreement, whether we have an agreement, like a written one, right? But by virtue of just us working together, Pia, that's like a um, a, a contract by conduct. Sindio, inamanisha ni mekubali kitu, mekubali kitu, tunakolab, tunafanya kitu, right? So, of course, disputes will come up. They will come out, come out already, there's a contract. Even when there's out a contract, there will be disputes. So what do we do, right? Um, the constitution is very deliberate um, to ensure that Wanjiko gets access to justice. So we have uh, what we call alternative dispute resolution, right? Um, so ADR is basically saying um, you can have an alternative way to re resolve your dispute before when they continue. right? So tribunals are one of those forms of ADR. They're specialized courts. We are very informal. Um, we are very flexible in terms of our procedures. Nasi lazimo kwe nawakili to come. Like to our tribunal, you can come as yourself. When imsani, you feel like uh, there was a song, haukuwa kwa yo equation, hujalipo do or something. Uh, by virtue of that, uneza kuja mwenyewe, you don't necessarily need a lawyer, right? We bora ukujena evidence yako, you, you explain your case, and the tribunal can review and say, okay, yes, kuna kesi, or kuna kesi, you need to get paid and whatever, right? Um, so alternative dispute resolution is a faster way. Uh, Utapata, like most creatives normally will go online, they fight on Twitter or should I say X? It's, it, I'm trying to get used to this new name, X. <laughs> Sounds like I'm talking about X-Men or something. Uh, so, but guys are fighting on X, they're fighting on IG, CG Ward. But you see, at the end of the day, if you're going to be fighting in the public space, what does that do for your reputation? Hey, you just come to, uh, you know, resolve to go to ADR, you save time, you save money. You save the stress. So like for us, the Copyright Tribunal, um, we are at K 
Kenyan's disposal to review copyright disputes. Now, kuna what is expressly under the law in the Act, alafu kuna what parties can also agree. Let me start with what is expressly in the Act. Um, remember I talked about CMOs, yeah? So collective management organizations wakiwa na any cases against their regulator, the Kenya Copyright Board, or any decision that has been made that they are not happy with or they feel like it was unfair, they will bring that case to us. Yeah. Um, if anyone and I feel someone has um, evidence to show that their, you know, copyright is being interfered with, it's what we call being infringed upon. We can issue what orders we call Anton Peel awards. So basically, to ensure that um, that uh, evidence is preserved to confirm and show that there was an infringement or something. Especially if you feel like kuna um, mtani interfere and then it, you know, either they make it go away or whatever, alafu kesi inakuwa sabotaged, right? Um, if there's a registration of a copyright and there's now a dispute, Seme, I went and registered to li, either we did, let's say we did a film together, we were script writers. Alafu mini chukwe script, ni ende Kenya Copyright Board, ni register to your exclusion, then you scare your story. Then you will come, you you will now, uh, you can write a letter to Kekobo or directly come to us and say, hey, um, I was removed from this equation and I have proof that I am also a rights holder in the script. Um, so I'm disputing this registration. And then we adjudicate that matter and we're able to say, okay, we have reviewed the evidence and yewe James Bialiko a script writer, ebu enda correct your register and subsequently kama kuna pesa umekula, but here James Shayake or something like that. Um, so those are like the general disputes we listen to, mostly also around um, any Kekobo decisions, Kenya Copyright Board, if they make, give any decision and you're unhappy about it, we will listen, we will be now like the appeal around that decision. Uh, but now, the the mischief, there's what we call the spirit of the law. Uh, lawyers, we, we are very flamboyant in our language, eh? so we call it the mischief. <laughs> the mischief of the law. So the mischief behind the copyright tribunal, uh, in, in my view, was to ensure that copyright disputes are taken care of. But I think the drafters work isolate just a few things. Yeah. Um, but ideally, come on a dispute, come on sunny. You can come to us. What what it just means is that the two people who are fighting, wakubaliane, waseme sawa tuna 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 zozana. There's an issue. Um, able to agree to the two copyright tribunal what this what what to resolve your history maramoja. Yeah, that would be much easier. So to kikubaliana, to andikiane, to seme, sasa tunenda copyright tribunal, we are, we are in, in legal terms, we're saying we're submitting to this tribunal because kuna ile me, me, me pasiwa kwa sheria, what's in the act, and then there's what now we can agree now as parties. And so now I'm saying, I'm even telling to those guys who are listening that if you have a dispute that is copyright or related rights centered, that is something as parties, mneza sema mkuje kwa tribunal, you were resolved. And the best part also about uh, tribunals is that it's very affordable. Like the kind of um, money that you will pay to, uh, you know, lodge your complaint, your disputes, to file uh, your documents is, is not a lot. Utapata it's like 100 bob here, 500 bob there. So at the end of the day, you find you've not spent a lot of money. But the best part is also in like 60 days, your case has been determined. Right. And then now if you're unhappy, you can now proceed to go to the high court. And the best part is that now high court come on and appeal. Sita kwa sasa an issue of law. Sisi tushafanya all the hard work. We've reviewed the case, the facts. We've reviewed the law, related the law with the facts and everything. And then we give that judgment. So high court, ikipa tai document to say you're appealing. Then we have already done half the work for them. Them now, they will, the appeal will be faster. Kuliko high court, you the first court of instance. They'll have to do a lot of research because they don't have that expertise. Yeah. So but a tribunal, 